Ginger beer bunnies. Forget food miles. This is food feet. We're hunting and cooking. Plus high altitude hardware. Tim Pilbeam reviews traditional mountain rifles. If you see a person carrying one of these things, he knows what he's doing. He knows his stuff. We've got news. We've got hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. plan is, I've got some bits in the back, so we're going to make uh, some rabbit goujons with a bit of a sweet chilli dip, kayak brin style. So we're going to eat our fresco tonight David, so uh, the weather's good, the sun's out, we'll get a fire lit. We've shot those two rabbits already, so we're going we're gonna to butcher them up and skin them. I'm going to try, try and show you a, a fast, efficient way to skin rabbits. And then we're going to strip the loins off the back and then we're going to uh, strip some meat off the legs, dip them in the batter, deep fry them and then uh, have ourselves a little treat before we go on to the evening shoot. That was about 67 yards, uh, pretty much sh happy shooting up to about 70 yards. I mean this, this bad boy is uh, zeroed into 50 so it's uh, give or take, it'll drop a little bit at 60 to 70. But as you see there, it's not really any problem. If I do miss it, then it's down to me. Okay, so I've got the two rabbits here that we uh, shot, well, over 20 minutes ago. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna gut them. I literally pinch here so I know there's no stomach lining or any intestines or anything underneath. Pinch it again. So you can see in there, they've got a nice clean, clean cut then. And you can, if you want, cut up that way, but I literally just do that, turn it upside down, let it all fall out. I put my two fingers inside, pull that out. I'm gonna cut just above the, the ankles and the wrists, then the neck, and then we're gonna turn it over. I'm gonna cut the back and pull it in half. People think they've got a quite strong taste, and they can do. They've got quite an earthy, kind of gamey taste. But you can you, you can get rid of some of that by cooking in different ways. So you can put it in, in salt and sugar water overnight. You can cook it in recipes that master flavour. But uh, I don't really understand why you want to master flavour because if you want that, you can go and get chicken. Brown sugar. Some of this lazy chilli, very lazy chilli, which is good because it's been pickled in vinegar too, so all I've got is just brown sugar, white wine vinegar and chilli at the moment. Just pop some of this just vegetable oil. So I'm going to get that heat up again in a minute. It's just going to make the batter. I've got some uh, gluten-free flour here because I'm gluten intolerant, so I'll just look after myself while I'm doing this. I'm just going to sprinkle cup and a half there. A bit of onion granules, a teaspoon of garlic granules. Pretty good. Mix that all in. And then the last thing I'm going to put in this is just a little bit of a bicarbonate soda. I like to help it fizz up a little bit. Because we're out shooting, we're driving, don't really want to be drinking beer so we've got gone for the good old fashioned Jamaican ginger beer. Pop that in there. And I'm just gonna use a spoon and mix that around. I'm gonna just keep doing this until I get into that batter consistency that I'm after, that kind of thick, runny. I, li I like to make things up and just change things around. Um, let's get in there now. Um, it's a new one, so we'll find out by the end of this. Uh, you get, it's get you're looking for more like the kind of the pancake kind of batter style. 
thickness. Let's see if that's the right consistency. We've got four of these out already and I just can't wait to really get in and taste some of these. You can see that pattern's like crisp, golden, it's perfect, can't fault it. Um, got that sweet chilli dip there, so I'm just going to dip it in there and uh, I'll have to try it. <laughs> That's so good. That really is really good. And the sweet chilli dip really goes well with it. It doesn't taste that earthy, that rabbity taste. We put in that salt water before it just to try and draw some of that out. I put it in a nice tasty batter made with the ginger beer. Straight in the sweet chili dip. That really is awesome, so good. It's your turn now David, get in there, get stuck in. Hopefully we'll see some more bunnies now because it's dark and they don't tend to bolt so much. I mean, because they are quite lamp shy around here, there's, there's been a lot of people that I've shot here over the years and uh, do find that night vision on this particular bit of ground is uh, excellent. Look, you can see like the damage they do on this orchard all around, it's, it's crazy, they're, they're absolutely everywhere. So a few times I've shot them and I've been looking everywhere to try and find them and what they've done, they've been standing on the edge of their, uh, on their hole and they've just fallen straight down. I had to look down in the hole, put my arm in and, and fish it out. But it's like a minefield all over these orchards. There's a mouse there. Can you see a mouse in the middle of my beam? Oh, yeah. I just shot a rabbit up here. We'll just come to look, look for it. You see this little mouse just pop up. We seem to be able to get quite close from about 30 yards back to now about, what, seven yards away, if that? Five? And, uh, they're just sitting there staring at us. Let's see how close I can get before it scarpers. <laughs> That's incredible. I've been using this clue light a lot. Well, for, for, for about three, four years now. I've got it at a game fair. It's called the Clue, clue Light Red Laser. And it's absolutely amazing because it fits in your pocket, it's got a 200 metre beam on it. It's made of real good quality steel and it's manufactured extremely well. And a couple of weeks ago it, um, it stopped working on me and I've been using it a lot. Falling out of my pocket, bashing the side of the truck, all sorts. So I sent it back to them and uh, they fixed it free of charge. Great customer service, so very pleased. But yeah, ideal handy tool that I always have in my pocket when I'm out walking around lamping or just trying to spot for when uh, I'm using the night vision. Yeah, I think it's been a successful evening. Um, not as late as I usually go out for, but I've got things going on tomorrow. I need to get home, but uh, I haven't counted them up yet, but a nice little number. The farmer's going to be happy anyway. We also got time to fit in some food, didn't we, David? So, all in all, happy. Now let's get these gutted so we can uh, head off home. Kai putting the fork into field to fork there. Now someone whom you should always check for silver when he leaves your house. It is David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. It looks like the Metropolitan Police has sold the names and addresses of 30,000 licensed gun owners in London. The Met confirms it uses a freelance publisher and mailing house from Leeds to print leaflets advertising certificate holders of a scheme to buy a product called Smart Water to mark their guns. Shooting organisation Basque has asked the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police to clarify the legal basis for passing on addresses of its firearm and shotgun certificate holders to external contractors. Chris Packham has been in court for assault. 
The BBC TV presenter and animal rights campaigner was acquitted of assaulting two people while campaigning against shooting in Malta. Speaking to Field Sports Channel after the hearing, Packham tries to characterise Maltese hunters as a criminal minority. We are keen supporters of Malta. We like the country very much. We at no stage advocate a, a boycott or any harm to the Maltese people. We are only concerned about a tiny minority of these people who are committing illegal acts against birds, both in Malta and also from a European and global perspective. And Malta is very keen to be a part of 21st century Europe. It's a fabulous country, but we need, it needs to make sure that this tiny minority of criminals is put to bed, that it's finished and, it's, and that it ends. Packham's remarks offended the Maltese. Here is the president of the Maltese Hunting Federation, the FKNK. Well, what kind of a statement is that? A criminal is someone who breaks the law. And I do not break the law because I am licensed to hunt and I hunt according to the law. And when I say I, I'm talking about the vast majority of hunters and trappers in Malta. Antis are under fire for celebrating the death of a hunter. South African professional hunter Scott Van Zyl was killed by a crocodile in Limpopo. The 44-year-old vanished last week on a hunting safari. DNA tests on the carcass of a crocodile shot in Zimbabwe confirmed that the reptile had eaten him. Animal rights group PETA called the death karma. With the turkey hunting season underway in the USA, officials are asking hunters not to use the popular method of stalking the animals. Missouri Department of Conservation staff are urging hunters not to use the highly effective fanning method as shown in this video by Realtree. Fanning has the hunter replicating the appearance of a male or tom turkey by placing feathers on their heads or on top of their firearm while crawling on the ground to attract the birds. But officials caution that this makes it too easy for a hunter to mistake other hunters for a turkey and shoot them. Daisy is the new official air gun of the Boy Scouts of America. The announcement follows last year's International Jamboree in Essex, where BSA partnered with the British Boy Scouts and Girl Guides Associations to provide air gun shooting facilities, while Browning provided the shotguns and Basque the coaches. Daisy will provide Boy Scouts of America councils and camps throughout the country with inflatable 12-lane air gun ranges. And finally, perhaps British politicians should take note of an American election campaign message. Country music singer Rob Quist is a candidate for election in the state of Montana in May. He floated the idea of a registry for automatic weapons and was immediately labelled dangerously anti-gun in a TV ad run by one of his opponents. He responds by showing his pro-gun credentials. He posts a video on YouTube of him shooting a TV that's playing the ad. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Next up, Tim looks at some traditional mountain rifles made for slopes rather like these. When Tim's not goat herding or yodeling his way across the mountain tops, he's hunting them. But with what? Well, last year he was struck by the simple style and practicality of what is known as the Kiplauf, a rifle designed by Continentals for heading up hills. And he has three different models to play with. I read somewhere in a magazine, in the field of hunting and stalking, the Kiplauf represents the epitome of elegance. A connoisseur's rifle that encapsulates the true spirit of hunting. Wow, that's spot on. It's something about it. For some, they are seen as symbols of an experienced and confident sportsman. And I think they are. If you see a person carrying one of these, think, he knows what he's doing. He knows his stuff. Rightly or wrongly, but there's something, there's something about it. Uh, and that's what drew me to them. That's why when I was in uh, Switzerland and I saw a gentleman bicycling down a, a steep hill with his Kiplaf around the back, I've got to find out more about the Kiplaf rifle. And we've got a beautiful collection here in front of us. Kippen is a tilting system and Lauf, L-A-U-F, means tilting barrel. So we have a tilting barrel system here. You can see that, it looks like a shotgun, but we've actually got a very interesting system here on all these Kiplaus. They are lightweight rifles, mountain rifles, purely designed for arduous conditions. And this is the Heinel Jaeger 9. It's very much the, the, the entry level rifle at 
just over £2,000. It's a working man's rifle, hence the, the flat cap here, but it's actually beautifully put together. With the, uh, the Ego J9, it's got a longer barrel, 24 inch barrel as opposed to 20, 20 inches on the other two. So the recoil or the muzzle blast is a lot less. So it's, a, it's a, probably a more comfortable rifle to shoot. Unique to the Jaeger 9, it's got a set trigger. Push the trigger forward and it's got a set trigger. Three pound trigger and a set trigger, it's a very adaptable rifle. I, I like the, the Jaeger 9 because if I was on a mountain somewhere, I wouldn't be too bothered if I actually scraped it along a rock. Because, you know, it is a very, very straightforward rifle. Now, this is a very interesting rifle. The K series of the uh, Merkel Kiplaus, they have a K3 and a K4. This is the K3. The K3 has an aluminium action, and the K4 is a steel action. The K4 is slightly heavier. The K3 Extreme, it only came out about a year and a half, two years ago. It's got black action, black barrel. It's got fluted barrel. They start at about three and a half thousand up to 24,000. This one fits a very unique market in my view. It's very much the person who's functional, the new modern person who wants a rifle which works. People will like the fluted barrel, 20 inch fluted barrel. It's been beautifully put together. The way the uh, strap holder has been kind of fixed to the underneath the rifle is really, really quite unique. So I think they'll fit quite nicely between the, the working man's rifle and the top end rifle. The nice thing about the K3, if I swap the rifle over here, it's got a really, really clever adjustable trigger here. There's three settings, three settings. And these settings vary from one pound to about 2.2 pounds. You imagine you're up a mountain somewhere with a pair of gloves on. You don't want to be pulling a one pound trigger. So therefore, I think it's very, very unique. Very clever, actually. So I, th I think that's a, a very much a plus point for it. So that is the uh, Merkel K3. Moving on to the, perhaps the, the most beautiful rifle I've handled for quite some time. And this is the Blaser K95 Baroness. This rifle is available from three or thousand pounds up to 20,000 pounds. The Baroness is about 12,000 pounds. It's got the most beautiful high grade, I think it's grade seven or grade eight stock. It's absolutely stunning. The arabesque embellishments around the action, which is so, so pretty. And the whole rifle oozes quality. And this one, which is different to the others, is that um, it's a Stutzen. So therefore, it's got wood going right to the end of the barrel. Do you normally get excited by wood? <laughs> <laughs> I don't normally, but it's, just, it's, it's interesting. It's just that as soon as I pick this rifle out of the box, I just completely, utterly fell in love with it. And, uh, and I've handled over the last seven or eight years a lot of rifles, and this is probably the best of all of them. Not the most practical for me, but it's just something stunning about it. I keep on stroke. I'm sorry, but I keep on. <laughs> I keep on stroking it. I mean, it's just the quality of the uh, of the uh, of the woodwork, really, which I just think is just beautiful. This model comes with an octagonal barrel. It's just something different, I suppose, really. But it's, it's octagonal. It's smooth just oozes that quality. Another thing I like about the K95 is the cocking lever. They all got cocking levers. This one's slightly different. You push it forward, it's quite light, it's not too heavy. And if I want to decock it, it, I just pull it back. The others are a lot stiffer, and the others you've got to push forward again to disengage that. It's just a minor thing, but it's a bit softer, and the pat's a bit quiet, a minor detail. So that is the K95. Baroness, an absolutely stunning looking rifle. The Kiplau uses the Franz Jaeger tilting block action. It sounds rather technical, but they all share the same system. And this is, the, this is what locks into the barrel. It's very, very clever. And uh, if I fit that onto the blazer, and that locks into the end of the barrel. It's a very flat surface, and that's incredibly strong, and that's what they rely on. And also, it, it kind of guarantees the accuracy of the rifle. So it's quite an interesting system. It's called a Jaeger tilting block system.
reason why people like the one-shot rifles is you actually make sure that one shot really, really counts. And that's a very different mindset to the, the bolt action rifle where you kind of take a shot then reload them again. It's all about making the most amount of effort to get it absolutely right, making sure your shot is absolutely right. So it's a very purist attitude to hunting. So uh, it's a thing in the UK we just don't perhaps quite understand. How often do you actually need to take that second shot? I'll leave that for you to actually think about. Some would say that the, the, the Kiplau is, is perhaps going against the, the market trends of the last five or ten years. It's simple, less to go wrong. Keep it simple, stupid, as they say. You know, nowadays we've got we've got a nice light rifle, you know, six pounds perhaps. Then we stick a moderator on it. We stick a bipod on it. And we've got a dustbin lid of a uh, of a scope. We've got dials, we've got knobs. There's so much to go wrong. So um, one thing I do about this is we're going back to the basics. I think that's probably one the one reason why the purists love the Kiplau so much. So Tim has fallen for the Kiplau style of rifle. As he says, they fly in the face of the current trend of pimping rifles within an inch of their accuracy. And don't think you need a mountain for your Merkel, Hennel or Blazer. There are a growing number of stalkers using them in woods and fields near you. Tim in his element there. Right, from the snow-capped peaks of Sussex to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Thanks to Rob Phillips for pointing me to a film by Freedom of a Bird, which specialises in long range. He likes a 282-yard shot at a rabbit with a 178MR. I choose a newer video at a crow at a massive 467 yards, a CZ 527 and 204 Ruger. As with all shots, long range or close, don't do it unless you can do it. It's the first roebuck of the season for Bremer hunting adventures. Emma shoots a nice buck with Brent and Ragnar. Here's a film that allows you to wallow in the oil and walnut of the London gun trade. William Evans' Gun and Rifle Makers, the pursuit and love of the outdoor sports is a softly lit romp through the history and heritage of the St James's Street gun shop. One of the big hunting seasons underway at this time of year is turkey hunting in the USA. Gobble Stoppers Series 1 Episode 1 by Homegrown Outdoors features a youth turkey he hunted Wisconsin. Logan Wright takes out his brothers Tanner and Cole to bag a bird. Here's another list from Ohio. First ever turkey by the excellent Wax Star Hunters features Sarge, who has a kind of turkey Christmas. Another world hunting season that's yielding good films on YouTube is the Red Stag Raw in New Zealand. Please no comparisons between my croaky voice and a red stag that's been roaring. Here is Josh Cairns hunting puppy land on South Island this season. For a flavour of duck shooting in Pakistan, migrated waterfowl Hunting 2017 shows shooters Adam Mayo and Mohsin Javed in some kind of wildfowl heaven. And finally, what happens when you overload a shotgun? Demolition Ranch is, as usual, here to show us. Kaboom! That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the link or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, or best of all, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's out 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain from, I can't quite tell why, the forests of southern Germany. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. Goodbye.